agents over there and I'm spitting there poised, you know, just ready to, ready to do it, you know. And the next thing I know, she breaks out laughing. And I said, how do you spell bureaucrat? And she says, B O U C A T. And I said, what's the matter? And she says, I'm, she says, John, you're, <laughs> you're not going to believe this. And I said, what? And she said, you know what a definition of a bureaucrat is? And I said, no, and I don't care. I just want to know how you spell it. And she says, fine, B-U-R-E-A-U-C-R-A-T. And I typed it all away, you know. And I said, now, I've saved the file, as every good computer user learns to do real quick, at his peril. And I said, okay, fine. Definition of bureaucrat. And she says, a bureaucrat is one who works at a fixed routine without exercising intelligent judgment. <laughs> As God is my witness, people, that's in the Random House Dictionary, the definition of a bureaucrat. <laughs> I tell you, I was right out of the chair. I'm on the floor, spread eagle like this. I reached up after I'd been laughing my guts out for about 15, 20 minutes. And she says, that's a bureaucrat. <laughs> you learn all kinds of things, you know. It's oftentimes not in ways you intended. At any rate, the point is that your title has been clouded by the bureaucrats and it's in the best interest of the banks that they do so because property where in there is a clouded title can be collaterally attacked and seized and thus they'll loan you money on it because they know if you blink they got your land. You see? They won't loan uh, money on a lodial title because it's not collaterally attackable. It's absolute ownership. And you can deed it through will or by any other means without inheritance taxes, all right, to your heirs and the signs forever. That's liberty. That was the American dream. Every man's home was his castle because every man had the same prerogatives and rights as the king. He had absolute allodial title to the land. Thus, in this agenda, we deem it of vital importance that no person be denied the right to hold any property under a allodial or quiet title. You give the people back the land and they become a responsible people. Now then, let's go on to the next one. Oh, this one I liked. <laughs> California shall make no law to place any lien or encumbrance, nor abridge, nor collaterally attack any property of any voter through voter or elector registration. Now, this one little piece right here, when the people of California wake up as to what it means. They may march on Sacramento and not even bother to stop at the Capitol building. Because every year, right? All them pretty Hollywood actors, you know, they're leads, okay? Stars, all right? They're not supporting actors like me or character actors. Uh, <laughs> but they, you know, they go on television, all these people do, and they say, Vote. It is your civic duty and your right. And it's important for us to lean your property so we can go further in debt. They never, of course, never tell you that unless I was producing the spot. Now, the bottom line is, people, is that every bit of the voter registration process is self-evident to anyone who's got a basic handbook of words and phrases you can get in any local library. You just take the voter's registration card, you know, the dookie, turn it over, read the three qualifications on the back, and then look up those definitions in the book, Words and Phrases. Number one is usually you must be a resident of the United States. 
You know why they use the term resident? Because it's a fictional creation for the United States, District of Columbia. Now how do you become a resident of the United States? Well, you've got to have a social security card and a driver's license and all those kinds of things, you see. And it also goes on with a couple of three other qualifications, all of which guarantee that you have totally sold your birthright or they aren't going to let you vote. See how the game's played? These are the politicians that are our servants. Does that sound right? Our servants? I, Jack, does that sound right to you? Does that... I, Maybe I've got it backwards, but we'll talk about that later at the hotel. Uh, anybody catch on to what I said? I didn't hear any protests. Unless you're a belligerent claimant in person, you don't have any rights. So maybe that accounts for one of the reasons why you're in trouble. Now then, we go on and say no person, person. And these are differences in capitalization because capital letters mean something in law. No person, person, citizen, citizen, resident, domicile, e, or other individual shall be compelled to enter into any form of contract for licensure, registration, or permits to engage in lawful activities. This shall not be construed as to deny the right to issue certificates of competency. Again, this is not a particularly brilliant thing on my part or anybody else's because certificates of competency were the precursors to the driver's license. And they were common. And no one had any objection to an individual showing that before he goes out on the public highways and takes care of this 450 horsepower piece of romping, stomping, killing machine, the state has a right and the public has a right to expect that a person display some degree of competency. Now this doesn't affect, and the point of this wordy thing here is to point out that the certificate of competency will not become licensure because there is a constitutional right to travel. 37 court cases have affirmed it nine of which state very specifically that no person's rights can be diminished by licensure. Now you don't have to believe me on this, okay? You're going to ask Jack and, and, and Rick Dalton and a couple of the other guys. They'll all tell you the same thing. All right? The only reason you have a driver's license, people, is because you're a commercial entity. You say, what? Commercial entity? Me? Well, I'm a bricklayer. <laughs> Here, you know, I, you know, I cut wood. I, I, hey, I'm out there throwing the trash cans in the back of the truck. I ain't a commercial entity. Well, but you are, see? Because that's how they get jurisdiction. And you're a commercial entity because you voluntarily chose to accept cert certain benefits, privileges, and opportunities from the state. And they reclassified you. That's why you have income. Income is a commercial term defined in the Uniform Commercial Code. Okay? That's why you have wages, salaries, and tips. You don't make money. Because those terms are all specifically designed to entrap you. And if you think I'm kidding you, I just went down to do a job in Texas as an actor. I mean, it was a kick for me because I don't work that much anymore. All right? And I went down there, and the guy said, well, John, how do we make out your W-4? And I said, I don't use them. I'm exempt and uh, all that. And he says, you're what? And I said, I'm exempt. And he said, why? I said, well, I'm a citizen at law, and uh, I'm not a commercial entity of any kind, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I went through the whole speech, educated the man for 45 minutes, and he says, well, how do I fill out the W-4? <laughs> And I said, you don't understand. And then I had to go back through it again. I said, what it comes down to is give me a subcontractor's contract and I'll sign that. You just pay me the gross amount of what's due to me and I'll let me deal with the taxes. And he said, I don't know if I can do that, John. And I said, well, just take my word for it. I said, otherwise I gotta go back to LA and you can get another actor. 
And he said, I think we can do that. <laughs> and I mean, you know. So he gave me a subcontractor's uh, license or a subcontractor's uh, contract and I signed it. And he paid me the gross amount and everything else and says right in there that I worry about my own income taxes and everything else. So it's all lawful and legal and everything else. And then he writes me back a letter. And this is just five weeks ago. He writes me a letter and he says, Dear John, we have been informed by the IRS